the director of Youth Think, a community organization in the Dallas, Oregon, that is focused on helping our children reach their greatest potential. And we were thrilled to be the pilot organization for Generation EQ's premier product, Pocket Full of Feelings. This tool has really helped our community raise a great awareness towards the importance of emotional literacy. And I can tell you as a certified prevention specialist, this is the tool that I've really been searching for. We're using it with a variety of audiences, such as our child care centers, elementary schools, Head Start, early intervention agencies, and even middle school and high school health classes. I've been working with a group of sixth grade students in an evidence-based drug and alcohol prevention curriculum and really thought that by infusing the pocket full of feelings process, we would be able to get that much more benefit in our regular classroom activities. The clip you're going to see next is Dr. Ann Corwin helping these same sixth graders learn about emotional literacy by utilizing the pocket full of feelings process. Debbie asked me if I'd talk to you for a few minutes about how your brains work and how that makes you behave. And so here's the first thing I want you guys to, to understand and learn about if you don't already know it. And that is there's one part of your brain that is the most powerful part of your brain. It has more power than anything else. Think of it like a telephone that never, ever, ever has any dropped calls. What message do you think would be the most powerful message that your brain gives you every single minute of every single day. Should I do this or should I not? Oh, should I do this or should I not? That's a really good guess. And I'm going to come back to that. Can you give me a high five? That is an excellent guess, and that's going to go right with everything else we're talking about. The most powerful part of your brain is the part of your brain that processes or tells you how you feel. That's the most powerful part of your brain. So if you're disappointed, if you're happy, you're sad, you feel guilty, you feel ashamed of yourself, all of those feelings, how you live, your personality, that's all tied up. That's the most powerful part of your brain. So if you don't remember anything about what I'm telling you this morning, the main thing to remember is feelings come first. You have a feeling about something before anything else happens in your brain. What we have is pocket full of feelings. This is, and they, the, your feelings, we call them the POFs. And we have 15 different feelings in here, and I was hoping you guys would play this game with me for a couple of minutes. We put your hand in the pocket and you pull out a feeling, and all you have to do is say if you've ever had the feeling before, and what do you usually do when you have the feeling. So is anyone willing to take, anyone from this table willing to take out a feeling? Okay. And you want to tell the color of the feeling and what the feeling is first and then tell people if you've ever had it and what do you usually do. Mad and I can get mad a lot, especially with siblings. But usually I just try and go to a secluded area and just try and calm myself down whenever I get mad. Awesome. And how do you calm yourself down when you go somewhere by yourself? How do you do that? I either, like, I'll count or I'll read a good book when, for a few minutes and see if it helps. Awesome. Okay. Embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> And have you ever been embarrassed ever? Yes. <laughs> okay, and what do you usually do when you get embarrassed? I try to hide it. Mm -hmm. embarrassed right now. <laughs> you try to hide it, okay. If you say to yourself, embarrassed is going to come, I know it's going to come. I can't leave it at home in the morning, it's in my pocket, I've got it. If you learn how to deal with the way that you feel, then, when you're the part of your brain that says, uh-oh, something's happening here, I'm having a feeling, 
then you're going to be able to learn how to deal with that and do something about it in an appropriate way. So you want to give that to Poffer? There you go. Awesome. Okay, would you like to try one? Okay. Uh, disappointed, and it's blue. Mm -hmm. And um, I have been disappointed a lot of times. When I do feel disappointed, I don't just stop what I'm doing. I keep trying to do it. I never really just stop. Awesome. That's an excellent way to deal with disappointment. There's two absolutely positive ways that you can deal with feelings. The two best ways to deal with feelings are music and movement, by far. Because what music and movement does to your brain it allows your brain to smooth itself out. It's talking to yourself.